Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor. In this past paper solutions video, I'll be looking at the Human and Social Biology May 2024 Paper 2. So starting off with Section A questions. Question 1A says, Justin is an amateur boxer. His trainer advises him that in order to increase his energy levels, he should consume a diet that contains more complex carbohydrates, such as sweet potato and cassava, which are rich in starch. So the first part of this question says to name the test that Justin could use to determine the presence of starch in his diet and state the color of the precipitate formed if starch is present. So the test that Justin will be using will be the iodine test, that is the test to detect if starch is present in food. You can also use that test for testing a leaf for starch as well. So the iodine test will be used and then the expected color change would be that brownish yellow color of the iodine turning into a blue-black color. So the color of the precipitate would be blue-black. So you don't want it to just say black or you don't want it to just say blue. So it is like black with a tinge of blue if you want to look at it that way. So that will be the color of the precipitate if starch is present. Part two, identify two foods that are rich in starch other than sweet potato and cassava. So I have rice and pasta, but you have a number of options that you can choose. So you can also mention other ground provisions. Obviously there's English potato, edas, things like that. Um, you also have cereals, oats, and you can also mention bread. So those are a number of other food options that are rich in starch. Part three, state which two of the following foods Justin should consume for growth and repair of his muscle tissue. So we have chicken, plantain, tomato, lentil, peas. So you're already looking for foods that are rich in protein because they mentioned the foods that he needs to consume for growth and repair of his muscle tissue. So protein is needed for growth and repair. So chicken and lentil peas will be the two options out of that list there. So chicken is food from animals, which generally would provide a lot of protein. And then lentil peas would be in the food group legumes. So legumes would normally be rich in protein. So that would be good for vegetarians, vegans, who don't eat foods from animals. All right, let's go to the next question. So part B, table one shows the number of children in hundreds who suffer from nutritional deficiency diseases in two countries. So we have country X and we have country Y. So we have this table one showing the number of children suffering from nutritional deficiencies in two countries, X and Y. So we have marasmus, quashiorcor, night blindness, and rickets, those are the list of the nutritional deficiency diseases. And then we have these two countries, X and Y, and the number of children in hundreds that have each of these nutritional deficiency diseases. So the first part of the question says, on the grid provided in figure one on page seven, draw a bar graph to represent the data shown in table one. So you definitely need to know what a bar graph is. So I have the graph, completed here. So remember a bar graph is different to a histogram. So a bar graph is going to show discontinuous data. So categories. So we have these categories, these different diseases. So those will be the categories. We have marasma, squashiorcor, night blindness, and rickets. So we can see that the bars are separated with spaces. So that's what make it different to a histogram. So yes, we're going to need a key because we're, there are two countries that we're going to be examining here. So we have results for two countries, country X and country Y. So it's important that you have a key because there are two sets of data that you're working with. So some key points when you're constructing a graph, so you want to choose an appropriate scale. So you want to know also what are going to be the headings for your axes, what's going to go on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, I have number of children in hundreds. And then on the x-axis, this is where we're going to put the names of the diseases, the nutritional diseases. 
So the scale that I have is we're going up in two squares, two squares per 10 children in hundreds. So we're going up every 10 children, that represents two squares. So we're going up in tens. So as you can see here, so for marasmus, the first disease, we can see that the bar is at 65. Marasmus for our country, why now the bar is at 55. So just to go back to the table so you know how we're plotting this graph and making sure that you're doing it correctly. So country X had 65, country Y has 55. So you're just going to be constructing your bars to that point, to those points. So similarly with Kwashiorkor, we can see that there were 70 children per 100. And then we have the country Y, 45 children. And then night blindness, we have for country X, that will be 35. And country Y is at 25. And then the final disease for rickets, we have country X at 20. And then we have country Y at 30. So once you have all of those, those, that, those bits of information correct, you know, the bars, the space between the bars, so you would notice that there is a space between each of the categories, each of the diseases. So the only bars that are touching are the bars associated with each, the different countries for each disease. So these two bars are touching from Erasmus, same thing with Kwashiorkor, but there's always a separation between the categories. So this is what would make this a bar chart, a bar graph, and not a histogram. So the histogram would have all the bars touching because it is showing continuous data. All right, so that is our graph. So going back now to part two of the question, from your graph, identify the country which had the higher incidence of both marasmus and kwashiorkor. So you can actually identify that from the table. You don't necessarily have to go from the graph. So if you look at the table, we can clearly see that marasmus and kwashiorkor were highest in country X. So country X has 65 and country X also has 70. So 65 for marasmus in country X and 70 children um, for kwashiorkor. So clearly that is more than country Y, which was 55 and 45. So you didn't necessarily have to go to the graph, but if you go to the graph, you can see that that is displayed quite obviously. So marasmus, we're looking at it. So just going for the graph, as the question is asked, in marasmus, we can see that the bar is higher for country X. And similarly for kwashiorkor, the bar is higher for country X as well. As well. So we can see that there's a higher incidence of these diseases for country X. So then for part three, from your graph, identify the country which had the lower incidence of diseases overall. So I have country Y. Once again, you can get this information from the table. Simply what you would do to understand which country has the lowest incidences, the incidence of the diseases, you're simply going to just add up the numbers, the total, you want to get the total for the diseases. So when I worked it out, that should have been 170 for country X and country Y would be 155. So overall, clearly country Y had the lower incidence of diseases. So going to the graph, you can look at that just simply by looking at it. You can see that country Y, the bars for country Y are lower in each case for each of these diseases. So marasmus, kwashiorkor, night blindness, rickets. The, well, there's one difference with rickets where it's higher, but all the others are lower for country white. So generally we can say that there's a lower incidence of these diseases in country white. All right, so that completes that part of the question. So then for part four, it says to state the major micronutrient that is lacking in the diets of the children in country X and the major micronutrient that is lacking in the diets of the children in country Y. So you have to understand what a micronutrient 
is. So there are macronutrients and there are micronutrients. So a macronutrient is any nutrient that is needed by the body in large amounts. And usually the nutrient itself is pretty large and needs to be digested. So carbohydrates, protein, fats, those are common macronutrients. Water can squeeze into that category because water is needed in a large amount. However, water cannot be digested. It does not need to be digested. Now, on the other hand, with micronutrients, so this is what we're focusing on for the question, micronutrients are those nutrients that the body requires in smaller amounts, and they're usually very small, soluble nutrients that does not require digestion. So this would include vitamins and minerals. So basically, we're looking for the major vitamin or mineral that is lacking from the diet of these children. So if you go to country X, so let's go back to the table. So I have my answers here, vitamin A for country X, and I have vitamin D or calcium for country Y. So let's go to the table to see how I arrived at that. Now, if we look at these diseases, they're nutritional deficiencies, so diseases. So that means that the children are lacking in a particular nutrient. So for marasmus and kawashiorkor, these are diseases where there's a lack of a macronutrient. Marasmus is typically when there's lack, a lack of um, carbohydrates, and kwashiorkor is typically when there's a lack of protein. So since we're focusing on micronutrient, those will not be included. So we're not studying them in this to get this answer. So we're looking at the other nutritional deficiency diseases, which is we have night blindness and rickets. So the question you'll be asking yourself is, okay, what nutrient is lacking in the diet that would cause night blindness and what nutrient would be lacking that would cause rickets. So this is where vitamin A comes in. So we can see that country X has the greater incidence of night blindness. So vitamin A is the nutrient lacking, the micronutrient lacking. So then when we look at country Y, we can see that rickets is a greater problem and rickets is when you have a lack of vitamin D or calcium. So we see both the vitamin and the mineral shown there. So either one can work. So that is how we arrived at this answer. All right, let's go to the final question for question one, final part, part C. So it says to suggest one disease that could develop as a result of overeating. So when you are overeating, so when someone is constantly overeating, they are putting themselves at risk of becoming obese. So that's like the first thing that should come to mind, obesity. Then there's hypertension, heart disease, diabetes. So all of these are common non-communicable diseases that can develop if the person is eating too much. So those are different options that you can give. All right, so that is the end of question one. To watch the rest of solutions for this paper, as well as many other past papers, visit my website, bioaid.teachable.com to enroll in a course today.